Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Stacy Wood. Oh yeah. We got music and everything. Actually, Stacy and I have kind of built a bond. We uh, connected over our professional learning development and I blew her away with my sound machine, right? Like it was pretty cool, right? You, you do like my, do my, and Stacy, this is actually Stacy's first podcast ever. And look at that. I got some of all right. So Stacy, hey, thanks for being on. Thanks for being on the podcast. And so I know you know the format here, the three questions. So I'm going to start right away. Um, who is a teacher that inspired you, you know, in your career as an educator, maybe as a student, and, and what did they do to make an impact? I would say that probably the teacher that inspired me uh, the most throughout my career, I've had several. But one that really stands out in my mind is somebody, uh, her name is Frances Butler. And I met Frances when I started teaching at St. John High School 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. And St. John or St. John's? St. John. Okay, just, just checking. St. <laughs> John, New Brunswick, not St. Gotcha. John's, Newfoundland. There you go. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and we, uh, we bonded right away. And I think... The reason why that happened is because we both have, um, you know, a real deep-seated belief in the relationship between teachers and how important that is and how important it is to lift each other up, how important it is to um, focus on the positive, how important it is to socialize outside of Mm -hmm. the building, and that really it's a, you become a family. And I think that that, when that happens and when those bonds are there, I think that that, uh, translates to the students. And I know that they, they feel that. And St. John high, uh, the school that I, uh, taught at for, Mm -hmm. uh, 18 years, um, it definitely had that feeling. It was definitely about, uh, that family feeling. It was, even though it was a very large high school, there was definitely um, a feeling that the teachers, um, you know, knew you, that um, even though if you didn't um, teach a certain student, if you saw them in the hallway, they would, they would definitely get the feeling that um, all of the teachers in the building cared about them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's because all of the teachers cared about each other and helped each other out. And, I, and the students would see that. They would witness that happening every day. And... I think that makes a big difference. And I, she really instilled that in me. And she was, you know, she was always the one that was organized. Like, it, it seems right. like small things at the time, but it's not. She would always be the one that she'd organize, like, you know, the, let's get together on Friday afternoon right. and go to our favorite local. Let's, um, you know, let's, it's, it's somebody's, um, you know, having a baby. So I'm going to organize a shower. All those sorts of things. All those cel- celebratory mm-hmm. things outside of school that teachers um, go through in their everyday life. And then all of the the things that you need to celebrate that happen inside of school as well. And even also to any of the, the crappy things that happen mm-hmm. and, and how you get through those. I think that because teaching, unfortunately, um, I know my experience has been, I mean, I know it may be different in other places, but teaching is a very solitary, you know, insular right. job where you're, it's you, you know, with these students in front of you. And oftentimes you're like, you know, you, a student will say something. You're like, oh, I wish either something funny or something that you're just like, whoa, this student just blew my mind. And you look around the room and you think, oh, I wish there was another adult in the room right. with me to experience this. Right. And right. I think because of that, when you are able to get together with other teachers, um, you know, and talk about all those things, I think those relationships between teachers are really important. And unfortunately, my experience in the last few years, administrators don't think that that's important. And they actually right. try to break some of that down. And I think that that's a huge mistake. First of all, for your first answer on a podcast ever, that was pretty amazing. It's oh, like you're a podcast pro. That was very, very good. Oh. Right? Oh, thank you. So, okay. And I know you're going to appreciate this. So, Francis Butler, if you're listening. <laughs> 
You know it. You she knew definitely it. deserves that. You knew the air horn was coming. I'm starting to tear up, kind of thinking about her because well, it just it was just amazing. Okay, so I got so I got a couple of things. Okay, so the the first thing is no, I I love that answer. I thought that was really powerful. You know what's awesome? You're really help, you're help, actually helping me write my blog post right now, which is kind of cool because you're reminding me of something. Uh, okay. And I'm gonna tell this in the in the blog post now. So I actually early on in my career, I was uh, I was the first new hire at a school in I think. 15 years. Okay. So it was a very veteran staff. It was a small town, small community. And there is a point where I did not feel comfortable going into the staff room. And I would, I would eat lunch with the kids every day. And, you know, people would say like, what do you, I just love eating lunch with the kids. But that was not totally true. I did. I did enjoy that. And I would do it sometimes earlier. And there was a vice principal there His name was Dale. I cannot remember his last name. And I feel bad because I want to give him credit. And he's like, hey, you okay? Like, I don't ever see you in the staff room, right? And he kind of, I said, you know, I'm I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable because of A, B, and C. And he really kind of took me under his wing to a point where I did feel better in that space and doing that. And I I remember that distinctly. And I think it's just kind of like, it could have been, but, but also, on the other hand, some people might just say, no, I, it, there's nothing wrong. I just, this is kind of how, like, you know, I know sometimes that when I'm speaking at a conference, I like, <laughs> this, is like a, this is like confession time. Uh, I get talked to quite a bit, and sometimes I'm just overwhelmed. And mm-hmm. uh, I'll just go sit in the bathroom, and I'll close the door, and I'll just sit down like it's my office for like <laughs> for mm-hmm. 10 minutes just to not talk to anybody, right? Because I just need mm-hmm. to like, oh, I can't talk to anybody right now. And so I understand people doing that too. So I think part of it when I was kind of listening to you thinking about that is that I was really appreciative that somebody took notice. And I think it's just kind of just be aware of that community because maybe maybe it was just, maybe I just didn't, maybe I just wasn't a staff room guy, right? And maybe that's that, but just kind of check in with people because, you know, sometimes they do that. So I, I just, that was one thing. The other two is that uh, my, my grade four teacher, Miss Butler, was my, I was like, is this the same Miss Butler? And I doubt it. <laughs> but I was like, oh, like shout out, to, shout out to like Miss Butler. Right? So, shout out to Miss Butler. Miss Butler, okay, Miss Butler, she wrote, this is one of my favorite things. And I did this every year when I was a teacher because of Miss Butler. She actually, at the end of the year, she wrote like a really long card to every single kid. And this is a little embarrassing. I was like super into the Smurfs, right? Because, you know, Smurfs. Why are you laughing? Yeah. This is why I, I didn't know. go in the staff room because everyone's funny. making fun of me about the Smurfs. I just think <laughs> it's funny. Well, I haven't I love the, Smurfs. the Smurfs in a long time. Well, come on. Papa Smurf, Grumpy Smurf. <laughs> brainy smurf which smurf would you be if you could <laughs> oh this is great i love this okay well, i i don't know i'd be you know depending on the day it could be grumpy smurf <laughs> right so i hope sometimes i'm brainy smurf you know <laughs> right so anyways yeah. she wrote on this card that she was shaped like a smurf like just all the positive things about me. And uh, my parents owned a restaurant. I used to bring pizza to the classroom. She talked about how much she loved when he did that and how much people appreciated that. And every year as a teacher, I, I took the time to write those long notes to kids. I didn't do it on Smurfs. I should have. That would have been awesome. But, but she did like, I don't think she didn't do Smurfs to everybody, right? Like it was very personalized to me and to like other kids mm-hmm. in the classroom. And so I just, I remember that and she, that, that really made an impact on me. And I, I always think about that. And I think about that in the way we recognize kids, things like that too. And it's kind of like interesting how your, you know, Francis Butler for you really, you know, talked about how important it is to really recognize everyone. And I had a teacher who did that for me when I was a kid and then taught me to do that for kids too. So again, shout out to Miss Butler's. <laughs> Right. All right. So next yes. question. So, uh, and, and by the way, for those listening, Stacy is actually also a teacher, but also the president of the local New Brunswick Teachers Association in St. John local, not St. Yes. John's, not nope. S-A-I-N-T John, or is it? No, it is S-A-I-N-T. Okay. But, but yes. no S at the end. That's correct. Right. Cause, cause that's is just one John. One St. John. Just one John. Okay. Yep. So, so you've probably worked with tons of teachers, tons of administrators. Mm-hmm. So when you think about mm-hmm. um, the administrators that you've worked with, maybe that you went to the school, who's one that sticks out to you? And, and what was the positive thing that you, you learned from them? Uh, 
So probably I've had a few really uh, great administrators, right. uh, luckily. One that stands out for me is someone uh, named Barry Harbinson. He was um, a principal at St. John High School. And I, he would have been my second um, principal that I had there. So I would have been, you know, this would have been 16 years ago. Um, and the reason why he stands out for me is that even though um, I was a new young teacher, he was, he always made me, he never made me feel like any question I asked was stupid. Right. Or um, that anything I wanted to do was crazy or that um, anything I wanted to try uh, try it. Like he mm. really was very, very supportive. Uh, he encouraged people to, um, he wasn't a micromanager. So he was very much, um, let teachers have autonomy to kind of do what they wanted to do in their, uh, classroom. Mm -hmm. And what I also liked about him is that, and I, and I don't know if this is because, um, I'm hoping that it's because administrators have so many things that they have to do in the run of a day. They don't have a lot of time in our province right now in our district, especially, I feel like teachers are not instructional or administrators are not instructional leaders. They're CEOs of buildings. They're worried about budgets. They're worried right. about ticking all the boxes and dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's. And they're not necessarily worried about kind of what is, you know, what instructionally is happening in their building because they don't have a lot of time to do that. They're not aware of what's going on because they don't walk around and see what's happening. Right. And because of that, there's a little bit of a divide. So when the principal does arrive at the door, it's like, Oh, something's wrong. Right. Oh, goodness, I'm doing something wrong. Right. And it's, there's a lot of anxiety around it. Whereas Barry made a point of trying to, um, you know, be around the students would see him around um he would always you know he would pop in and kind of see what was going on so it didn't seem like it was a, a right. punitive thing it was a supportive thing and if you had an issue um you know if there was if a parent called and there was a meeting and all those sorts of things even if he wasn't um uh fully on your side fully like or understand or yeah. agree necessarily right. with what you did he never he always supported you in front of the parent, in front of the student. And then he would have a conversation with you right. after basically, you know, really, this is why, you know, this happened and why you shouldn't do it again. Here's the, here's the things that you should do instead. Here are the things you should have said instead. You never felt, you always felt supported. You never felt like you were going to be, um, you know, run over like a, with, like right. with a bus. You never felt it. You always felt supported. And I, appreciated that and i it's one of those things where you don't necessarily appreciate it as you know you don't right. realize what you had until it's i really it's gone. honestly haven't haven't had that experience since right with an administrator okay so barry unfortunately barry, barry. barry getting shut out okay a couple things yeah. i gotta i gotta share with you here so you said something to um and and there's I always struggle with this term and is like, it's not, a, it's autonomy. You said the word autonomy, but it wasn't total autonomy because obviously Barry did give you some instructional support. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when mm -hmm. a teacher says to me, because I think, I think it's like, like, trust me to like do things and to do this, but also like help me get better, not come into my classroom because you're crapping on me like find those mentorship. And so when, when I always, I always kind of take issue with this a little bit when teachers say like, Oh, my principal's so awesome. They just let me do whatever I want. I'm like, that's not a really good principle mm -hmm. because, because to me, it's like, Hey, there's, there has to be that kind of balance of autonomy, but you have to push to get better. And I know a lot of really great teachers who don't get attention uh, from, cause they're like, Oh, that teacher's great. You know, we're going to spend all our time on the teachers that maybe aren't doing so great. And then that teacher leaves because they're like, I'm not growing here. I'm not getting any better. Right. And so like, like it's like the way that you kind of explain, it, I think is really paramount because you felt you had autonomy, but you were also pushed in the right places. If that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? I think uh -huh. that's like, I, I don't think it's like a, a total either, or if you're going to really help people move forward, because we want people to grow. Um, I, I, the, 
the, the as a, as a former administrator, I had to do really honest to God. I hated it. Like like uh, budget stuff and like paper or whatever. Like these things that you have to write and stuff like this. So I want to give like a strategy to to people listening to this right now that are administrators because I think it will kind of kind of you know um, you know take care of one of the needs that a lot of teachers have. So I would actually say to my staff, hey, I got like some like emails I got to take care of, but I I actually want, uh, I just want to be in the classroom doing this. I don't need to be in my office. So I would like sit in a teacher's classroom for like three hours, knocking off emails, doing reports, doing this stuff too. And I would explicitly say to them, I am not here to evaluate you, but I want to be present in the environment so that I know we're doing everything to support you, that we're actually helping create the environment. So like, I'm sure every teacher, if if they have any amount of experience, the same as us, you know, Wi-Fi at some point they stood up on a desk and held a laptop or a computer trying to get the connection. Like, like that's ever worked. But for some reason it makes us feel like it works. Why do we think that that works? I don't know. But, but like, I remember, I distinctly remember being in a classroom as a district office administrator for a few hours watching a teacher do that and called them called the IT department who I worked with directly and said hey I am watching this teacher and I said this right in front of the teacher and the class I'm watching this teacher stand on a desk try to get their wi-fi working and it's not working so what we say is working for this teacher and I know this teacher will use it but a bunch of teachers will not use it if it doesn't work. So we got to fix this out. And I remember the teacher looking at me and they're like, thank you. Thank you for doing this. Right. So, so the reason I I bring this up is because we live in a world where you have, there's nothing tethering you to your office. You can take your laptop, go into a classroom. And the thing that you said, and I actually really appreciate, because I'm like, I did a lot of that stuff that you said is good. So I appreciate that. I was in teachers classrooms all the time. Because I wanted it to be normal. I wanted it to not be like, oh, because I, I, everyone knows what I'm talking about. Maybe you never heard this term. I call it the superintendent entourage, right? Superintendent comes to the board and they're all on their knees talking to kids. They're pretending stuff is happening because it's like more of a PR thing than it is actually like helping people, right? So like, yeah. so for any administrator listening, you know what Stacy's talking about, if you feel like, hey, maybe I'm not doing that, Take your laptop, do the stuff that you still got to do because I'm not, I don't want any administrator working, you know, going into the classroom and then being there 10 hours a night. You're not going to get it done as quickly. You're not going to knock off your emails if you had quiet solitude, but you're going to make your environment much better. And I think that to me is we do have to do some of that CEO stuff. We do have to do some of that budget stuff, but it shouldn't be at the sake of our teachers. It should be at the sake of our community. If that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? I think there's ways, especially Mm -hmm. with technology, the way we utilize it now. So so I, lo- I love that. And you actually made, I don't like, you know, maybe the teachers I worked with when we're like, George, never, I did that all the time. Probably annoyingly so, to be honest with you. They're like, this guy's like always in our classroom, <laughs> right? But like, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to understand what was going on. And like a lot of people see it as like, I wanted to like kind of just watch the teachers all the time. No, that's not it. I wanted to see like what what's the space that we're putting them in? Because a lot of times I, I remember, I know now I'm blabbing on, I remember this one time the IT department said to me, it only takes two minutes to log on. Cause I was like, Hey, the amount of time when you log onto the computer and gives you all the permissions is taking forever. Like it takes two minutes. I said, but it's taking two minutes plus 20 grade one kids that, that, so that doesn't work. We have to like have it. So that it's just instant. Right. And that was like an argument that I made, but I wouldn't have known that if I actually didn't spend time in the classroom, seeing that process going. And so I think it's like when, like, don't, don't go into there to, to your job is to also create the best environments for people to be successful, not just to, you know, keep an eye on the teachers and make sure they're doing their job. That's so that's something I would say. I don't know if that was like, whatever. So I don't, (laughs) I don't know. Anyway. So, so, okay. Last question. We went away too long here. Last question. If you go back in your career, right, and you look at your first year of teaching, what advice would you give to yourself? Um, I think the biggest piece of advice I would give to myself is um, don't be, don't think that you have to reinvent the wheel 
all of the time. Don't be afraid to uh, take some of the information, some of the um, material that's been given to you that a lot of teachers have tried to help you with. Use that. Mm -hmm. Don't don't feel like you have to be this. Oh, I'm brand new. I have to like prove yourself that you have to uh, kill yourself and work eight and you know eight hours after you leave school to in order to kind of create all of this new stuff. When um, there's a lot of really great stuff out there that people are willing to share with you, um, use that. Don't don't feel like you have to always reinvent the wheel. Um, I did a lot of that in my mm-hmm. first couple of years of teaching and I, and I almost burned myself out. I think that that's really important. And I think also too, it's really important to ask for help if you need it. And teachers are not great at doing that. So I don't think. So do you know, actually, and this goes back to your first point. I, I didn't do that. I actually, I did the opposite of what you did. I actually just took another teacher's stuff right away. And the reason I did that, Marlene Bertram, my grade four teaching partner, <laughs> Right? First year, Marlene Bertram on my very first day, I'll never forget this. She came up to me and said, look, I've been actually teaching for a long time and I have a ton of stuff that I've built over the years. If you need anything, just take it. And I'm like, yep, I'm taking all of it. So like I took everything and she just made my life so much easier. She made me feel so welcome to that school right away. Kind of talking about like that family portion that you were talking about really. And made my life so much easier. And I I actually probably would have done what you did in the first year if it wasn't for Marlene Bertram. Do you know what I mean? I would have tried to reinvent everything. I would have tried to do everything from scratch. But I had a veteran teacher who came up to me. So like, I think, you know, beautifully be that person. You know, if you have some years under your belt, kind of find those people that are doing that and saying like, hey, here's the stuff that I do. And I actually remember this. I don't know if this is a, you know, this is ever taught. Somebody warned me like, hey, you better, you better be careful because there's a lot of teachers out there say, look, I've been teaching for 30 years. I'm not just giving my stuff over to you. Right. And I, and like, I remember being warned of that. I've never had that experience, but I know other people had, but I was so blessed to have someone do the exact opposite to me saying like, I've been teaching a while. Here's all my stuff. Go for it yeah. because they're because ultimately at the end of the day, she's she knows that um, if I do bad in grade four with those kids, they're not then the whole all those kids get you know that are in my class are gonna are gonna lose out right. So I think that was really powerful. So Stacy first podcast you did amazing. <laughs> Shout out. So stay, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I'm looking forward to the longer conversation that we're about to have. And everyone, thank you so much for listening. And I'm stalling so I can get to my... Please be quicker. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Have a wonderful day.